What is up, GVA? It's Xavier, and I'm back bringing you guys some domination gameplay on Firing Range. Just a little bit about the gameplay. Uh, I'm actually in a party in this gameplay with other YouTube commentators, Tad Sox1995, Deserve, and I am Warrior13. They're not as big as me right now in terms of subscriber count, but you know they're really awesome players. And we got into a party one day, and we were tackling Team Tactical, and we just kept running things the old-fashioned way, you know, holding the objective and whatnot, capturing the objective, doing the damage that needed to be done. And of course, you see me with this underpowered FAMAS, right? Am I right, people? Like, this gun is completely underpowered. It is not the overpowered gun of this game. Uh, my perk setup actually was lightweight sleight of hand and marathon, you know, because I'm an objective player. You guys know that. I play the objective, and you guys can currently see me capturing flags like an animal. So what I'm going to be talking about in this gameplay is, well, it's actually another subscriber story. And this commentary is really going to be centered around hurdles. Now, what I mean by hurdles is something that is prevent that prevents somebody, uh, I guess, from moving forward or is some sort of hindrance or some sort of problem that they're forced to deal with and have to take on. It can't be ignored. It has to be dealt with. And I, I don't say this as if it's, you know, it's something really, really bad and it's something that you might not enjoy dealing with or something that you might have some sort of sense of accomplishment. But there's so many different types of hurdles that there's so many ways of explaining it. Now, with this particular hurdle with this subscriber, I'm going to give you guys the general detail of what I got from the message. So basically, he was a new subscriber, he was telling me, and he was telling me that he was he's currently 17 years old. He's a senior in high school, and right now he's living with his grandmother, and he's actually supporting his grandmother. He goes to high school, like I just said, and he's actually wagering two jobs right now. So he's working two different jobs, and he's got to deal with high school in order to provide for his grandmother. Now, the reason for this is because, unfortunately, uh, his grandfather passed away when he was 12 years old, and he, his grandfather's life insurance ran out, so that required him to get a job when he was 15. So he's been working from 15 to 17. He's been working two years, two jobs, and also dealing with high school from becoming a junior to a senior in, those time, in that time frame. Uh, he used to live with his parents when he was a kid, but unfortunately, when he was five years old, his mother passed away on him, and that wasn't his fault or anything like that. Uh, it was due to secondhand smoke, and he was telling me that his father was a, a heavy smoker. He used to smoke like a carton a day, and uh, he blamed he partly blames his father for all all that happened to his mother and how she passed away at such a, when he was so, such a young age. And he doesn't talk to his father now. His father never really called him after he moved out and he was living with his grandparents. So he's living with his grandparents, and he just wants to know. Uh, he just wants to find some way of dealing with this. You know, it's not, it's not, it's not easy to do this. I can tell you right now, I don't work two jobs. Uh, I'm done with high school. Uh, you know, but when I pick a subscriber story, I pick it because it has some sort of comparison to my life. Now, I'm not saying that I'm on the very same boat as this guy, where he's not, where I'm living with my grandparents and stuff. Like that that's not the case for me. My hurdles that I had to deal with was when I was a kid, when I was in elementary school. Now, what ended up happening to me in elementary school was when I was in grade one, uh, I was in a special. I was in special ed, so right out of kindergarten, I was put in special ed because I wasn't a very good learner. Uh, I didn't get really good marks, so they put me in special ed. Then, what ended up happening a year later, I took I took a special test, and it, it apparently showed that I had a learning disability. Now, what this means is this this would explain why my marks weren't really great and why I wasn't focused in class and stuff like that. Now, it doesn't mean I'm like I was retarded or something like that. Now, that's not a really good word to use, but it's not like I had a mental illness. It was just as a learning disability, it prohibited me from doing really well in school and focusing. So what ended up happening was I was put into a, a special ed program designed to focus on children who had learning disabilities. Now, there are many types of learning disabilities. Uh, there's the general, like I just said, there's a general learning disability where you're just on that border between having a learning disability and having your brain process normally. And then there's another level below learning disability, which was called mild intellectually disabled. Now, that's what I was diagnosed as. I was a mild intellectual learner. So, yes, I was slow. You guys feel free to laugh. Uh, but, I, yes, I was a very slow kid. At, uh, um, you know, it's just it was out of my control. I didn't really pick up on it. I was just being a normal kid, having fun. You know, it was kind of, you know, I was just, I was just a little kid. I was in grade two. And, you know, getting all this information told to me, and telling me that, yes, you have a learning disability, so now what's going to happen is you're going to have to go to special ed every morning, five days a week, and you're going to have to do these special brain exercises designed for kids like you who have a mild intellectual disability. 
Now, there were other kids in the school who were special ed, but there was no other kid who had the same problem as me. Every other kid was that step higher. They just were just learning, dis they had that learning disability, but it didn't hinder them as much as it did me because I had to do that much more work because of what I had being a mild intellectual learner. And this, you know, not only prohibited me from doing really well in school because of, you know, this problem, I had to work that much harder. I would actually literally, I would have homework in the summertime every year because of this problem. Now, I'm not saying as this, this is a, a bad thing. I mean, from where I was as a kid to when I transitioned into high school, uh, I exceeded in high school. I was an honor roll student every year. I got honors for specific specific subjects. You know, so I obviously I thank all the work that I did. I thank my parents for pushing me and stuff like that, you know, to conquer this hurdle. And that's what ended up happening. So I had to do all these special brain exercises, these worksheets that were designed for children like me who would have to work that much harder. So there were two special programs basically that would help you focus with math and English in general because that's what I was exempted from. I was doing horrible in math and language. Now, I was obviously I was a D student in everything. But as I progressed through the grades and got older, my marks went uh, went that much higher, especially in sciences, social studies, history, geography. Uh, those subjects were good. It was always the math and the language that was a hindrance to me. And that required that much more work in the special ed program that I was in to deal with all this and to help my brain process things a little bit better you know, and to prepare me for high school. Because I was in this special ed program, I was labeled as a mild intellectual learner from when I was in grade 2 when I was diagnosed all the way till grade 8 when I finally graduated from the special ed program and you know I got all my papers signed officially that I did not have a learning disability and that I did not need all this extra help anymore now I went into high school you know, thinking like oh I you know I've been exempted from math and language and french for so many years I mean how am I supposed to take this on in school and you know it was kind of freaking me out I'm like how am I supposed to do this work I've never done it before and that's why I had to go to summer school. I did all this extra work in the summertime, like I said. I had to do all these special brain exercise work, uh, brain exercises, uh, like worksheets and stuff like that in the summertime every year as a kid. And then go to summer school right before high school, not because I was a failure, but just to get that extra help and that ex extra lineage or to prepare myself for the subjects ahead in high school. And that's what I had to do. So that was the hurdle that I had to deal with. Now, there are other hurdles I've dealt with. Now, because of this, because of my learning disability, there was obviously bullying and, you know, kids calling me retarded and stuff like that because I couldn't do simple math like they could. And there were many situations where they would try to test me and pressure like that. And, of course, not knowing the answer was really, it was really scary to me. And I really don't talk about this to people. And I know I'm talking to, about this to a bunch of complete strangers on YouTube because that's the kind of guy I am. I'm the guy who gives advice and compares his advice that he gives to other people's lives and their problems but I, I do this to help you guys and I only pick the stuff the stories or the problems that relate to me because I think it gives a better perspective and helps you a lot more than having someone you know randomly picking a story and saying oh that was interesting uh, all I can say is blah 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 here's the advice you know that doesn't really help you I figure pick something that relates to me and not be I know it sounds some sort of selfish but keep in mind it's to help you guys that much more and you know to say have someone say hey you know I'm not the only person in the world with this problem you know there's someone like me out there and there's always kids saying you know I'm the only person like this I'm the only person that has this problem there's no one that does as much work as me or there's no one that has these problems as much as me so I hope you guys enjoyed this commentary if you guys have any life stories or problems please send me a personal message I will try to help you out in another commentary other than that GVA thanks for allowing me to post I'm Xavier and I'm out come check out my channel and subscribe peace